Maptitude mapping software is designed to complement all of the work you do in Microsoft Excel. Maptitude can read and write Excel files so that you can easily perform geographic analysis on your spreadsheet data and use your results in either platform. This tutorial will show you a number of ways that you can use Maptitude with Excel and unleash new analysis possibilities impossible with a spreadsheet alone. For example, here I have an Excel spreadsheet that contains a worksheet with customer data that includes addresses and sales volume, and a second worksheet with the addresses of my stores. Maptitude makes it easy to map my data in several ways. The first thing I will do is click the New File button and choose the Map option to launch the Maptitude Create a Map Wizard. Create a Map Wizard gives you start to finish assistance in creating a general purpose map or a map of your data. The first thing to do is browse for the Excel file that contains the data. And I'm going to work with the Customer Worksheet first and click Next. Maptitude shows you the fields in your data that it found for mapping. You can verify and change the fields if necessary, but in this case they are correct, so I will again click Next. And now choose how to use your data in the map. First, let's make a map that shows the postal codes with the data attached. And choose a type of theme. In this case, let's create a color theme that shows the total sales in each postal code. Maptitude examines the customer data in the Excel file, determines the total sales of the customers for each postal code, and opens a map with a color theme showing the results. Postal codes shown in dark green have the highest total sales, and postal codes shown in a pale yellow have the lowest total sales. Now let's use Create a Map Wizard again, but this time let's geocode the individual customers on the map. Again, I'll choose to create a new map. Notice that Maptitude remembers the Source Customers Worksheet, so I can go ahead and click Next. And click Next again. And this time I'll choose the first option to locate the customers by address, zip code, or city. And I'll check this box to add the customer point locations to this open map. Maptitude requires a unique ID for each customer it geocodes. Since I do not have an ID field in my customer worksheet, I'll go ahead and have Maptitude create one for me. I'll save the geocoded customer locations to a Maptitude geographic file named Customers. And I'll have Maptitude use a scaled symbol theme so that customers with higher sales will be shown with larger symbols. Maptitude uses the address information in your Excel spreadsheet to place a point for every record. In this case, of the 1,341 customers in the spreadsheet, Maptitude was able to locate 1,325 using the address and zip code. One record was located using the address and city because perhaps it had no zip code or an incorrect one, and 15 records could only be located at approximate locations within the appropriate zip code, perhaps because these addresses were post office boxes or were missing street address information. When I click OK, Maptitude redraws the map with a geocoded customer scaled to show their volume of sales. I'm going to repeat the steps to geocode the stores that were on the second worksheet in the Excel file. This time I'll need to browse for the Excel file again and choose the Stores Worksheet. And again I'll add the stores to the existing map. When I click OK, Maptitude adds the two store locations to a new layer in the map and zooms to show the locations. I'll click the store symbol here in the Display Manager so that I can change the style from the default and differentiate the stores from the customers. I'll change the symbol, the size, and the color. And finally click the Previous Scale button to see all the customers again. I've now used the data in the Excel file to show which zip codes have the highest sales, where all the customers are, and what their sales are, and where the stores are located. Now I can use Maptitude to perform some geographic analysis of my customers and get the results back into Excel. First, for example, I want to find exactly which of my customers are within 5 miles of one of the stores and create a new Excel spreadsheet of just those customers. I'm going to display the drawing tools first by choosing Tools, Drawing Toolbox. And I'm going to use the Circle tool and click on the map at one of the store locations. I'm going to enter 5 in the radius box and click OK. Maptitude draws a circle with a 5 mile radius on the map. Now if I right click on it and choose Export to Excel, I can create a new Excel file of just the customers within that 5 mile circle.
And if I switch to Excel here, you can see the new spreadsheet. And if I scroll down, you can see that there are 141 customers within five miles of the store I chose. The second worksheet shows the stores within that circle. In this case, just my store number one is in it. And on the third worksheet is data from the color theme of sales on zip codes. Any zip code that is at least partially within the circle is listed on the worksheet. This column shows the total sales for the zip code, and this column shows the proportional sales based on how much of the zip code is located within the circle. So if I sum these two columns, you can see that approximately $151,000 in sales comes from customers within five miles of the store that I chose. The next analysis that I'm going to do in Maptitude is to determine which store is closest to each customer and how far away that store is. I'm going to open a Maptitude data view of the customer layer. And I'm going to add two new fields to the layer. I'll call these fields closest store and distance. And I'll make the distance field a numeric field. Now I'll scroll to the far right of the data view so we can see the two new fields. I'm going to highlight the closest store field and right click and choose fill. I'm going to use the tag option and choose the store layer so as to tag each record with the name of the nearest store. Then I'll highlight the distance field. And again, using the store layer, tag it with a distance to the nearest store. Now, as I scroll down, you can see that each customer record now has the name of the closest store and its distance away. I can save this data view to an Excel file now so that I can have a spreadsheet of customers that includes the information on the closest store and its distance. Simply choose File, Save As, Choose Excel Worksheet as the file type. Enter a name for the new Excel file and click Save. And if I open the worksheet, you can see that it now has the longitude and latitude of each customer, the closest store, and the distance from that store. The next thing I want to do is study the customers based on driving distance to the stores. First I'm going to remove this circle from the map, and then click this button to open the Drive Time Rings toolbox. I'm going to click this button to use my two stores as the locations around which to build the Drive Time Rings, and create three rings at 10 minute intervals. And before I create the rings, I'm going to do one more thing, which is to include the customers in the ring analysis. So I'll click the Settings button, and click this button to include my customers in the demographic analysis. For each time ring, I'm going to count the features in the customer layer, and sum the sales of those customers. Now I can go back to the Drive Time Rings toolbox and click the button to create the rings. Maptitude uses the drive time information for the streets to determine how far you can go from a store in 10, 20, and 30 minutes, and adds those rings to the map. I'm going to move the toolbox out of the way and hide the zip code layers so that we can see the rings a little bit better. I'm also going to turn on the water area and street layers for reference in the map. So now you can see that the vast majority of the customers are within 30 minutes of a store. All the customers within the darkest green center ring are within 10 minutes of a store. The customers within the next ring are 10 to 20 minutes from a store. And the customers within the lightest outer ring are 20 to 30 minutes from a store. Next, I'm going to click this button to generate a report which will include the demographics of the population within each ring and will include the number of customers and volume of sales in each ring. If I scroll down, you will see first the map and then the demographics. For example, the median income of households within 10 minutes of a store is approximately $81,000. And the population within 10 minutes is approximately 474,000. 
And finally, if I scroll to the bottom, you can see that there are 266 customers within 10 minutes of a store, 579 customers between 10 and 20 minutes, and 383 customers that are 20 to 30 minutes from a store. You can export this data for the drive time rings to Excel by choosing File, Export Document, and then XLS or XLSX file. I'll go ahead and click Yes here to open the Excel file, and you can see that the Excel file contains a picture of the map and all of the calculated demographic and customer data for the drive time rings. I'm going to close this Excel file and all of the Maptitude windows and show you another way to use the results of your Maptitude analysis in Excel. I'm going to open a map that I've already created that contains a selection set of customers that require a delivery today. These customers are highlighted on the map in dark blue and with a label. First, I will click this button to open the routing toolbox. Next, I'm going to set the routing options. I'm going to have Maptitude determine the best order to visit the stops and have the route to return to the first stop chosen. Next, I'm going to use the Add a Location tool and click on the map at my store to set the first stop. And then I'm going to add the remaining stops by using the customer layer and the selection set of 11 customers requiring a delivery. Maptitude determines a route with the minimal travel time that starts and ends at the store and visits the chosen customers. When I click the Directions button, Maptitude displays the directions for the route. Right click on the directions and choose Export to Microsoft Excel to see the directions in an Excel worksheet. As I scroll down, you can see the directions for visiting each stop. Finally, I'm going to close this Excel file and all the Maptitude windows and show you one last way to use your Excel data in Maptitude. When you import data into Maptitude, changes you make in the original Excel data will not be reflected in Maptitude unless you also make the changes there. If you instead open your Excel file without importing it and join it to a Maptitude layer, then changes you make to the Excel data will be reflected in the map. To illustrate this, I'm going to start by creating a general purpose map of Massachusetts and zoom in to where most of my customers are located. Next, I'm going to open the original customer Excel worksheet and make sure the import box is not checked. Maptidoo displays a data view of the Excel worksheet. Notice that the fields are all green, indicating that they are read-only. I cannot edit the data or add fields or tag the records as I could earlier. Next, I'm going to return to the map and turn on the zip code layer. Then I'm going to click the Join button. and join the zip code layer with the customer data. The joined data from the Excel workbook are shown at the far right of the data view and, for example, if I sort these by sales, you can see that these are the zip codes with the highest sales. I'm going to make the zip code layer the working layer in the map and create a color theme of the average sales by zip code. And while I'm at it, I'm going to change the colors used in the theme and click OK. Now I have a color theme showing the average sales by zip code using data directly from the Excel workbook. I'm going to zoom in here and change the zip code labels to show the total sales and the average sales. Now you can see, for example, that the zip code 01451 that contains the town of Harvard has total sales of $6,930 and an average sales of 
What I'm going to do is save this Maptitude workspace with the open map and data view. And then close all the open windows. Now I'm going to go back to the original customer workbook in Excel. I'm going to change the values for the customers located in 01451. and save the file. Now I'm going to go back to Maptitude and reopen the workspace. When I refresh the map, you can see that the labels now show the total sales to be $2,000 and the average to be $500. And the color of the zip code is now a pale yellow color to reflect the revised average sales value. And that wraps up this video on using Maptitude with Excel.